Welcome back everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, uh, what was last week? It was a review of the Rapido. So this week I decided that uh, I'm going to bite the bullet and if this model is going to exist on my layout, it's going to have to be weathered. Um, it's always a, a bit of a, an internal struggle to, to take weathering and uh, any kind of paint to something this nice, but uh, to, to get it to fit the era, to, to get it to fit on the layout, it's going to need to be weathered. So uh, in addition to the, the weathering of this, I also wanted to talk about these uh, 8K weathering pencils that I've got. Um, if you have an opportunity to check them out, they, uh, they're semi-grease um, pencils. And so they're not really a colored pencil. They're, I guess they are, they aren't. And they've got some unique techniques that you can use them with. You can use them dry uh, as is. Uh, there's some great videos out there. And in fact, I think even like AK themselves have some uh, tips and pointers on how to use them. Uh, what I picked up on though, and what I've used in the past is a wetting technique, um, which then you can apply as a pencil. You can use some foam applicators to kind of dab the, the paint on, if you will. Uh, so th they're really unique. Uh, they come in all sorts of different colors. I bought a set of uh, two boxes of weathering colors and they range from some light grays. I think, you know, like these are concrete marks, uh, dust, and then your standard kind of weathering colors are all, you know, so we've got vivid orange, light rust, dark rust, uh, streaking dirt, things like that, you know, so, so your standard, again, weathering colors. So I'm going to use the, uh, the standard techniques of weathering. First of all, I'm going to take a, a whitewash uh, to dull the paint a bit on this unit. Then I'm going to uh, clear coat it to seal that layer in then I will come back and start applying pencils and another wash of, of dark uh, kind of wipe that away that'll help drive um, some detail in you know some dark into like cracks and crevices and doors and things like that um, and then use the pencils to highlight areas rust on the plows you rust in areas that might have gotten hit by rocks things like that and uh, and we'll go from there and see how it turns out. So let's get started. One of the things you want to do when you weather uh, any type of model, whether it's an exact version of what you have or if it's uh, something similar, is to do a little bit of research just to see how the weathering happened on the real unit. And uh, so this is a uh, brother of one of the the units that uh, I have. This is the 7486. I have the 7499. I do have one picture here in the 90s. Uh, I believe this picture was taken in 95 and you can see how pretty much weather-worn this thing was at this point in its career. And uh, so figure 95 is going to be about when this unit would have been running with Wisconsin Central. What I like about this other picture is if you look at the nose here, that is clearly Wisconsin Central. So that really uh, kind of solidifies that this unit at some point, uh, now granted this, if you look location of this was down in New Orleans, but uh, so, so really, I think the Wisconsin Central unit is the one roaming here. Um, so that must have gotten picked up somewhere and, and headed south. But uh, this is a great side view of one of the sisters of, of the unit that I have to give you an idea of what, what took place here. So really, this silver became a real gray. So that'll be a bit of a challenge to really dull the trucks up and then almost make, make the... Uh, fuel tender, um, fuel tank rather, uh, pretty, almost the same color, you know, probably from dust and, and things like that. So, uh, we'll have to gray that up quite a bit, uh, kind of going back to, to this one here, the streaking and, and just the overall grit and grime of these things this is, this is going to be a, a filthy model, uh, when it's finished. 
So uh, before I get started, what I like to do uh, to prevent having to come back later and do a lot of cleanup, and sometimes it's even harder uh, and or and or impossible to clean it up, is take some blue painters tape or any type of masking tape that you can come by and cover up things that you don't want weathered or that you're going to have to clean up later so in this case any glass that would have been cleaned by you know yard crews that uh, tended to the engines um, so i'll cover up the glass there the the back windows on the cab uh, front windows probably the number boards the headlights yeah, headlights probably would have gotten dirty but i don't want them to dim at all uh, the class lights I'll cover up as well. Maybe even this beacon, just uh, the real unit, probably all of this stuff would have gotten filthy. Um, but uh, I, I don't want the, the windows, uh, you know, to get all kind of hazy. Uh, so I'll cover that stuff up. It's a little bit of uh, preventative maintenance in the beginning that uh, will save you some time down the road. All right, so to get started on things, I just take the tape and I put it on a piece of uh, glass that I've been using. As you can see, I've, I've used it to cut electrical tape, other pieces of tape that I've got left over. And uh, I'll start cutting it into just small strips. Um, usually try and get an idea of, of like the window height, um, but you can you mix and match. So I'll just cut a few pieces. Uh, and it doesn't have to be, you know, just so it sticks, um, you know, you're not, you're not really creating a seal like you would if you were taping to, to create a, a nice hard line. Um, this is more just to keep over spraying things off. So just a, a little bit of a rub on it and, and that should be good enough. And I'll grab this next one. So one thing I will say that I like to use while I work on my uh, models whether I'm doing some uh, taping like this or or just disassembling is, uh, yeah, this is just an old egg carton, uh, an 18 egg egg carton works great. Uh, you can, it's these, you know, kind of defilades here work great. You can put the cab in, uh, in between one sometimes. And this isn't as good as a, a nice foam one, but a lot of times you can, protect the unit while you're working but what I also like too is you can angle them and again you can find ways to prop the unit um, on these pieces here and keep the details out of the way and, and out of harm's way and but what it also can do is gives you a nice space to work when you need to uh, get at something that working on it you don't want to lay the unit on its side um, so there, so then you can, uh, really easily get in there and I'm not working at it straight on. I've kind of got a little bit of an angle on it. And then when I want to do the other side, I can just turn it around and lay it on its side again, and then put the, uh, the same thing on this side. So, all right. So before I get too far along, I thought I'd show you how I make these boots, I guess, galoshes for the trucks. Um, so I, I mocked one up uh, using the uh, previous, the six axle one that I had made previous, gave me an idea uh, of where to start. So I went ahead and uh, just basically held a piece of cardstock up to the um, truck. And then you mark off where you, the axles are going to be in the center. And then you kind of got to create a void in this area here. And I just, I overshoot on either side um, to, to cover up anything here, the wheel tread and, and things like that. So uh, I'm going to use this now that I've got a template. I'll trace it out and then just cut it out and then apply both to the unit before I start painting anything. Okay, so things are all covered up and ready to go. As you can see, I've got the windows covered. I did put something over the beacon. It's hard to see in this angle, but I've got the number boards covered up. I've got the boots on, so hopefully that'll help protect the wheels. Um, I also did go ahead and remove the couplers, and on these units, I went ahead and I put the coupler box back in, though, because this whole piece comes out as a unit. But I want that to be weathered, but not necessarily the coupler. Um, those I'll weather independently, but I wanted those in so you can see the uh, headlight there I removed. So, and uh, so bring in my uh, my spray booth and uh, start uh, putting on a 
a preliminary wash of, of thinned white. Okay, so here we are in the spray booth, uh, which is actually just a box with a uh, Lazy Susan on it that uh, I've used for years, as you can see by the all the paint colors. Um, but uh, I mixed up uh, some Vallejo uh, model color, as just a uh, Blanco uh, foundation white. And I thin this uh, consistency kind of of milk. Uh, we'll see if this is thin enough or not. I'm going to put this in my airbrush. And then I always have a piece of just something laying around. This is a uh, old pike stuff or something like that wall that I've painted numerous times. And I start by spraying on here before I start spraying on the model just to give myself an idea of is my flow good? Um, is the how is the paint coming out and applying? So I will, I have a, uh, a Wada Eclipse, it's a dual action, a, um, you know, top feed, and uh, I've, I've really enjoyed this. It's a, it's a nice model. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, pour the paint in, and uh, I pre-mixed it just in a medicine cup like this. That way I'm not mixing in the container itself, and then we'll get started. All right, not sure how hard it's going to be to hear over uh, the compressor running. Um, but uh, now the key with this is that you're not looking to apply a finished coat. This is just to dull the paint. So I want a very light uh, coating and I can come back and always apply, but you can never take any off. So you can, uh, you can see I'm just going to come here. I can get real thick with it, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to find my uh, a good a good pattern and just gently apply it, uh, lightly apply it, and now we'll go to the model and try and mimic that same Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work up and down. Uh, the consistency with water streaking, uh, things like that, is always going to be up and down. So I want to do the same with the, even this, this weathering coat. To get at the trucks and the underbody detail, I'm trying to be as perpendicular to the model as I can. And then when I come up to the walkway and the roof line and stuff, I'm uh, turning more towards a 30 degree or 45 degree angle. Um, so that way I'm coming down and I'm getting onto the walkway itself. So whenever I get the airbrush out, uh, I always mix too much paint. So this is when all the cars and other rolling stock on my layout are, start to shake and shudder a little bit because now I start to look around for any uh, cars or any other thing that on the layout that hasn't been weathered. Um, and I happen to find a couple of box cars. So since I've got the paint mixed up, even if I'm not about to weather these up fully, I might as well make use of the paint that I've mixed and uh, not waste it. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and give these guys a, a good light coat of, of wash as well since I've got everything set up and going. Since I have two of the same car, I thought I'd show you what the difference is. So the car in the back, I hope you can tell, I've actually put the wash on and then the car in the front is completely untouched. So, uh, you know, if I spin them around here, you can kind of get an idea of just what a simple wash can do and how it can remove the the sheen off of it and you know even though this isn't that shiny of a car to begin with it had a really nice paint job already um, but uh, just that simple white coat so the next step once you've got the whitewash applied um, is to come back and apply a, a clear coat and uh, I saw this recommended I know that this can be a controversial topic as to what is a quality spray what's going to could damage plastic i will say i've used this several times and so far the models that i've used it on are still looking good i haven't had any yellowing um 
I no damage to any plastic or anything like that. So I can recommend this uh, if someone's had bad luck with it. Um, you know, don't know, but uh, I've had good luck with it. So this is Krylon matte finish and uh, it's just a rattle can. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the three models that I uh, sprayed up and then uh, let this all dry. Okay, so we've got uh, the clear coat applied and uh, the you want to let all of this dry as you're doing this. And uh, thankfully, a lot of these, uh, especially the lighter coat of, of white wash is uh, very thin, so it dries quickly. The clear coat dries quickly. So now the next step is something that I learned from NS Modeler. Uh, NS Modeler, uh, you know him. I'm sure you subscribe to his channel. If you don't, search out NS Modeler. Exceptional modeling, great tips, great channel. But uh, I've used his technique before. If you look back a few videos of mine, um, I actually weathered up, um, I think some cars using his technique. So the next technique, and, and this applies really well with this particular model since it was, it is going to need to be really weathered up heavily, is to take AIM or any type of weathering powder. I just happen to have AIM products. Um, I've got a grimy black and then a hard rust, like a medium rust color. And I just use this box kind of as a mixing palette. Um, I don't want to tip it too far, but you can see it's it's just uh, the bottom is covered in in a multitude of uh, different shades of. I just grab some rust, I grab some dirt, and basically what you're going to do is now just come in here and liberally apply it all over the place. We're just um, his technique is to get it on the model, and we're going to come back and we're going to wipe it away with uh, some cosmetic sponges with some paper towel uh, with whatever you have uh, at the ready uh, but basically we are going to take a lot of what we're applying here off but what this is going to do is it's going to drive the weathering powder and then the subsequent wash because it's going to be a wet wash um, it's going to drive that dirt into the details of all of the doors the louvers um, the, the little details on the trucks um, so you can really kind of be pretty heavy with this because we are going to come back later and take it off. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to keep applying this all over the place. I'm going to apply some dark, especially around like the exhaust, for instance. Um, and again, we're going to we're going to take a lot of this off later so you don't have to worry about going too heavy. All right, well, uh, so the weathering powders have been liberally applied, and you can see, I mean, I've even still got some dust up here on the top that's uh, just kind of sitting there, and uh, I've just really kind of applied this all over the place and really, really went at it. Uh, so now the next step is to come back, and you can use... Uh, and you can use cosmetic wedges like this. Uh, you can get these in the uh, cosmetic aisle of your local supermarket or you know Walmart, wherever wherever you shop. You can they don't have to be anything special, but it's a it's a really nice uh, fine porous uh, sponge. Um, so this works, or just a standard paper towel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get this wet, and we're going to start to wipe uh, down. The unit and and we're going to work in a in a vertical uh, pattern to remove the heavy weathering that we've we've applied here and again that's going to drive the color into the cracks and it's going to wash the top off now the the key to all of this is again that sealant so we did the white coat to to dull dull the paint we sealed it with the clear coat and now we're coming back with the this wash and it, this won't impact because we've sealed the white coat, the, the thinning coat, um, we won't remove that as we do this. So, uh, all right, on to the next step. So a few things we've got going on here. So uh, I always save the empty plastic bags that stuff comes in, like this is just evergreen styrene. The, uh, this makes just an easy way to protect your workbench while you're working. Granted, it's a workbench, it can be dirty, who cares? But if you want to contain plastic and powders and stuff like that. So then the other thing I did 
was I brought my Lazy Susan over from my airbrush station. That way I can rotate the model without having to deal with touching it. Um, so I've got a, a handful of cosmetic sponges here uh, ready to go. As you can see, I've used some of these before and then I got a brand new one. And then the other thing I've got is this uh, foam applicator, which is just a foam tip on the end of a handle. And this is nice because you can get it wet and sometimes you can get in, uh, use it to get into some tighter areas, just, you know, stuff that the larger wedges can't get to or your paper towel. Um, so again, just uh, have some paper towel at the ready, have it wet and you just tear it off into, into pieces. And uh, we're going to start to remove uh the the air the weathering powders and again you want to work in vertical vertical fashion so even on the roof you know roll it off the top and uh that's that's what we're going to do here we're going to start to work those away so i've got a little bit of water um just in a tray so i'm going to dip one of the foam applicators in there uh get a damp And then I'm just going to start to, you know, work. So I'm pretty pleased. Uh, this this unit is was again for what I'm going to be modeling in the mid '90s. This unit was at the end of its life uh, for the most part, uh, and the pictures that I found, like I showed at the beginning of the video, even the one that was with the Wisconsin Central unit, was pretty filthy. Um, so even though this you maybe it's a little on the heavy side, um, but I've still sealed it in. I really like how dirty this unit looks. Um, it it just it's filthy. It was in its career at this stage, so I feel like this is a good representation of what it was. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and looking at the models uh, or the pictures rather online. I'm not seeing a whole lot of rust on these units. Um, normally I would come back and I would apply some rust to the trucks or you know, along edges. I think what I will do is uh, apply a little bit along the, the edge of the plow. You know, these are going to pick up rocks, ballast that's kicked up, things like that. You know, some along these leading edges, uh, you're definitely going to get some rust maybe on the back here. What I'm not seeing though on the pictures that I'm looking at is a lot of rust along like body edges things like that which is uh, encouraging um, these units obviously stayed pretty rust free uh, for their duration so so I'm gonna go ahead and use these pencils here uh, to apply some darker rust probably a combination of of say this dark rust color maybe with some brighter orange rust um, strong ochre and maybe a little bit of light rust and apply that to the um, pilot there, back pilot, um, and then see if I can somehow ink in uh, some oil stains around the fuel filler, fuel filler uh, in there. Uh, but otherwise, overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with, with how kind of filthy this thing came out. I'm just applying it along and you can see it's it's a little bit thicker uh, when it when it gets wet. Uh, it's got some some of that grease kind of activates, if you will. And so we'll go ahead and just kind of work it in here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with a, a little bit of the this rust, uh, this orange.
And now with uh, a little bit of the, what is this, the light rust as well. I'm trying to, to, to work and, and show this on camera at the same time. It's, it's not as easy. And then what I like to do is use one of these cosmetic applicators and just remove some of it. Um, and it, it helps it to blend together a little bit. And again, if you remove too much, uh, you can always apply it again. Um, no big deal. So, so there, I just gave it some some rock chipping and rusting i'm hoping that shows up on the camera okay looking to see if it does but uh you know maybe a, a little along this a pilot edge here okay uh that's almost kind of like a a tear off in uh, unboxing videos i gotta say that the one of my favorite parts of of doing mod weathering is that final tear off of all the uh, masking tape that you applied so whether or not you think it turned out um there she is and uh like i said i, I think the the beauty of this was that this unit was pretty heavily weathered by the time it was operating with any wisconsin central in the late 90s end of its career um, so it was really kind of actually a pretty easy weathering project simply because you just made it look pretty dirty and hey uh, success right so um there it is I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out um it'll look good rolling around now with my wisconsin central units and like i said um on uh, railroad picture archives i happen to catch one of the sister units of this running with the wisconsin central probably a uh, jeep 40 uh, most likely so this will look great running with my units and i can say that it was uh it was a real thing so um, there it is. Well, I hope that some of the tips and techniques that I showed are, are helpful. Uh, if you didn't find them helpful, please comment below and let me know what I can do to improve that. Um, like I said, check out uh, NS Modeler's uh, actual video on, on how he uh, demonstrates this. His units turn out gorgeous. And he did one um, on his uh, BC Rail c40-8 from rapido uh and that's a unit that i actually do want to do myself so and uh also check out the uh the ak weathering pencils uh, i really like these i've used them now multiple times um, find them to be uh, very useful in, in getting in uh, tight spaces you can you can draw with them like a, a normal pencil um, honestly i, I kind of wish i would have had these when i did my grain silos because these would have made great streaking and um, for the uh, the concrete uh, forms on those so a lot of good uses for these so as always i really appreciate you guys checking out the video thanks a lot for coming and watching and sticking through this one and uh, if you didn't subscribe already i'd appreciate it but don't don't feel the need uh, thank you much and uh Enjoy, and we'll see you next time.